distinguished Senator Laka Wogu, who is my longtime friend. We were roommates when I was in the, at the River State University of Science and Technology before I left for the University of Colorado. Distinguished Senator Tango Di Dozo, who happened to be my former Commissioner for Finance uh, when I was the Governor of Ebert State. Please forgive me, I forgot to recognize the distinguished leaders of the Senate and the very distinguished Senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. My name is Chibike Rotimi Amechi. I hear I shouldn't say this, but I have to say it for history purposes. I happen to be one of the first Nigerians to have served as speaker for eight years. In the period I served as speaker for eight years, speakers were impeached almost on a regular basis. I have also served as the governor of River State under PDP. Under PDP. But by my second term, I was the governor of River State under APC. Good morning. Distinguished Senators, it is a rare pleasure to stand before you. And believe me, this is my first time of addressing the Senate. And I, I thank you, I thank the President for this privilege. Whether I become a minister or not, this will go in the history book of mine that I once addressed the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But truly at the mercy of the Senate. And like you know, this is a hallowed chamber. And I'm deeply humbled and honored to have been nominated by the President and to have been given a chance to address you on what I thought or what I think will be the little contributions that I have made to the development of Nigeria. I have told you earlier that my name is Chibike Rutimi Amechi. I'm truly a Nigerian. But, and I said to you, I am the past governor, immediate, I'm the immediate past governor of River State. Before then, I was Speaker of the River State House of Assembly for eight years, just as I was the governor for eight years. I was chairman of the Conference of Speakers for two tenures. And I had the privilege of also serving as the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum for two tenures too. <laughs> Taking together, whether as governor or as speaker, these two career paths tell the story of public service. During my tenure as speaker of the River State House of Assembly, we achieved a lot, some key bills we are passed, like the anti-kidnapping law and the River State Schools Right. In these bills, and I drafted this bill myself, I felt pain that there were children who couldn't go to school. And I had to ensure that by this bill, that became a law, that children and parents and teachers had their rights and privileges, and the government had obligations to fulfill. However, my most fulfilling moment as speaker was the passage of the River State Schools Rights Bill. This bill clearly enunciated and defined the responsibilities of parents, teachers, and children to guarantee our children access to qualitative education. Education is not only qualitative, it must also be accessible. As governor, we inherited a state that was comatose. And in, in the throes of insecurity, River State bore the fault lines of the Niger Delta militancy. Our immediate task was therefore to restore security and improve the social and economic well-being of our people. Ours was a two-pronged approach of physical and fiscal security. By physical, I mean putting money in the hands of the river people. Whilst we confronted criminality and aggressive law enforcement measures, we embarked on what we call massive social and infrastructural development, the idea for the record purposes. We declared an emergency in education and guaranteed free and compulsory education up to secondary school level. During my tenure as governor, we awarded the construction of some over 500 primary schools, and we completed and furnished 314 of these to 100% completion, while others were virtually completed by the time we left office in May 2015. We undertook the training and recertification of teachers already in the service of the state, and employed over 13,200 teachers. Our efforts and investments in the education sector did not go unnoticed, 
as Port Harcourt won the UNESCO World Book Capital in 2014. We competed against state, I mean, cities like Moscow and Oxford. In the area of healthcare, it is on record that I built, oh, not my, me, our government built 140 health centers, and we employed a total of 400 medical doctors. When we came, there were only 200 doctors in the employment of the River State government, and we had to employ 400 doctors. Anyone who visited Port Harcourt while we served will testify to the fact that we worked to bring back the old glory of Port Harcourt as the Garden City and as its third leg in the economic tripod of Nigeria. We built a dualized network of 1,500 kilometers of road, and they are there for people to see. 23 bridges, two major flyovers, and two interchanges. In the area of power, of the 350 megawatts total capacity generation assets invested by the government before hours, only 700 megawatts, an equivalent of about 20% worked. So with enthusiasm, we ramped it up to 77%, and we introduced our own 360 megawatts of power bringing us a total of 750 megawatts of power by the time we left office. And this power was an example of the Greenfield Generation Project at AFAM. That massive investment is partly the reason why today residents in Port Harcourt enjoy nearly 24-hour power supply. On the whole, Mr. President of Minister, I say with pride that during our stewardship of eight years, we consistently maintain our pledge to our people to render transparent and accountable stewardship our government happened to be the first to introduce, as a state government, the public procurement law by which all, 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 pro, all purchase should go through the public procurement. To guarantee that we did not deviate from that pledge, we are the first state to pass a physical responsibility law, and that is also on record. We adapted the physical responsibility law of the federal government and the University of Reverse the of Public Procurement Law. Both laws stem from executive bills, and we are pleased that we maintain our stance of surrendering the power of the governor to award contracts until the end of our tenure. Mr. President of Senate, sir, distinguished senators, it is therefore fair to say that under my leadership as governor of River State, we redefined governance and repositioned River State as a destination choice to live, work, and do business. Accordingly, Mr. President of the Senate, distinguished senators, I give you my word that if I'm confirmed as minister by this distinguished Senate, I'll bring to bear my vast experience as a legislator, as a speaker, and governor in the execution of my duties.